Hi, everybody. I'm Michael Jordan with AB Friendly Company. As always, we're down at the Underground Meadery, man. I uh, have some stuff really going on and a freaking mess. <laughs> so I uh, just thought I'd throw that out there, right? That, uh, man, that uh, it, it, it turned out to be a little bit more work than I wanted. I'm going to go ahead and take out my card. I haven't even started this part yet because, man, it was a, it was a mess. And I'm going to tell you why. Today we're making what we call Kate Gooseberry Mead. Kate Gooseberry Mead. We're going to be using two pints of gooseberries. Two pints gooseberries. 2.5 pounds clover honey. We're going to be using water. Dollar store. We're going to be using one pack red star yellow premier blanc for today's date and our starting gravity that's what i'm putting on here get your tape like i said it took me a little a little behind today on a friday <laughs> had a lot going on and then i decided to do a cape gooseberry mead man that was a craziness so cape gooseberry ingredients water honey cape gooseberries they call them cape because they got this uh shell around them inside is a little yellow gooseberry right inside there well you can see that real good All right but they're cape gooseberries uh the reason it was a mess is because man i mashed them and to me they're like a tangerine cherry uh basically they taste like a tangerine and if you eat a cherry tomato and how they pop everywhere and all those seeds go everywhere yeah this is what this is this is a you pull the stem back you twist and pop and this little tomato looking like thing comes out. You place it on the side of the jug and squeeze and hopefully it doesn't shoot back in your face. So we got these last ones here. We'll pull the cape off, twist, pop them in there. So this is a fresh, well, not fresh fruit. I didn't pick them today. These were shipped to me. So I popped them today. <laughs> They're really kind of cool. Taste like they taste like a tangerine cherry tomato. All right, so we put in two pints in there. So that's what we got to brew with: two and a half pounds of honey, some water, and these Cape uh, gooseberries. We'll be using our Red Star Premier Blanc yeast to eat all the residual sugar. For brewing, we'll be using a one-gallon brewing vessel. We'll be using a hydrometer reading for specific gravity. We'll be using a hydrometer, temperature reading, scissors, and of course our balloon for the airlock. And as always, you can see that I had my pen as well as an index card for recipe installation. And we'll be using the coffee pot method to make everything work. So right off the beginning, you saw I put the cake gooseberries in. And man, they were splatting everywhere. I'm glad I didn't hit any on the roof. Uh, I didn't know about juice number or not. I'm not a big juicer guy unless I filter a lot of stuff because I don't like I don't like wasting my mead. That when you put all your product in and you have all that pulp and stuff in it, and you filter fine out. You got a half gallon of mead, man. And so I like to juice and filter everything, or just add raw product like this. So we'll just go ahead and add our honey. Remember, make sure you get your honey up in the air so it doesn't make that bubble. Super cool. All right, can you see how that big block comes out at the beginning? If we get that at the top of our jug, it will cover the jug and the air will want to come out. And we'll have honey running down our jug and it becomes a fiasco. So we're adding our sugar to our adjunct or honey to our fruit. You know, it depends how technical you want to get. I'm not, 
Well, I'm a drinker, not a scientist, Jim. That's my Star Trek reference. I'm not a big Star Trek fan, but that's the only reference I got. All right, so with the coffee pot, we usually add about two to three cups of hot water to our coffee pot, and then we pull it out, and we pour our coffee in here. Oh, I forgot to show you how to remove your honey. When you're done pouring, drop it to the jug and turn it all the way around and pull it up, and then you won't have honey running over it. It, it makes it easy. You won't get honey running down the side or anything like that. I put some hot water in my jug. I'm using plastic. If you're using mason, make sure you get the lid on tight and swirl it around this way when you mix it up. Don't shake it because the steam and stuff will spray out of those lids. But if you're using plastic like I am, you just squeeze the sides, put the lid back on, recycle, reuse, tighten it down, give it a couple shakes, and look, the steam made that sucker pop right back out again. Mm -mm -mm. Right, so we're all good to go. And we give it a couple good shakes. The reason we're doing this is we're trying to get all the residual sugar out of whatever vice we we're making alcohol. So we want all the sugar we can on a natural basis. So I've got fruit sugar as well as my honey now and a little bit of warm water. All right. Put my lid back on, put it in my sink to wash, recycle, reuse. I'm going to use a little more hot water, three cups. I'll probably pour one more cup in. There we go. Remember I told you, keep all your, you know, your device. This was an old apple uh, cider jug. I'm going to go ahead and put my lid on it. Then you just shake it. You beat the fruit and everything with the honey and the hot water to dissolve the honey, and you shake it. All right. Before I do all that, let me wash my hands here real quick to make sure I've got everything going right. Before I started all of this, I went ahead and poured myself one that you've seen us already make. It is the cherry flavored braggot using beer. It's cleared up nicely. It's got good legs. It smells odd. I mean, just, I can't place it. I can't place if it's like of ocean or, I can't tell. Uh, but, it's damn good drinking. That was a big drink. So pour yourself an eight ounce glass. And when you get to shake it, drink it. So we had a little drink and we were shaking. All right, so I've got my gooseberries. I got some like, little gooseberry on the side here. Man, the things were popping everywhere, right? You know, I didn't know, you know, I've never tried them before. So this was new. This was just shipped to me, right? Uh, from Ekbram Farms and growing. If you want to grow, grow Epton. So. You know, I looked them up and I had them ship me some stuff. I'm not recommending them or anything. Find some good cake gooseberries or gooseberries in general and go for it. But basically, we've got everything mixed now. Let's add our water. Now, when we go to do this, remember, I'm doing everything in a small mouth jug to start off with. And then I usually rack to a bigger jug mouth so I can keep filtering using my filtering units. But I'm going to add a jug. And I usually try to get this a little more than halfway. Because what I'm going to do is I want this to start mixing a little bit. Oop, wrong lid. Man, there we go. Do right, a little shake, do a little drink. Man, that's good. That's trouble. If you guys made this with the two cans of beer and the cherry, that's trouble. Just to let you know. Yeah, I can feel the buzz from that. Ah, that's that's some good stuff. Leave an inch and a half to two inches of headspace on the top for fermentation. Right, and I guess right now, let's give it one more shake. Because I just want to drink, man. Because this is... Tastes like kind of like grapefruit. Man, it's super good. Give this one more shake with my lid on. All right. 
right, I think we made a mead. Let's get a specific gravity reading. Now remember, there's going to be some fruit. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Almost messed up, put it back in my jug. Wow, that shows you how good I am right now. Let's take a test. Now, a guy asked me, he says, your fruit floats to the top, Mr. Jordan, what do you do? When you're taking a specific gravity reading, push it down, see if you can get it down. If you can't, you might have to re-pour. Bam. Fruits at the bottom, swivel at the top. That's what I like to see. We're sitting approximately at 1.065. 1.065. And that is roughly 10% alcohol. Remember, for every pound of honey you add, you get roughly 5% alcohol. Or pound adds 5% alcohol. We added about 2.5 pounds. This says it's sitting about 10%. I'm pretty happy with it. I like to wash off my hydrometer in the hot water and then put it back in storage so it doesn't have cross contamination but I don't want to break them uh, I have four of these and I usually buy two a year from traveling and doing stuff so something to think about getting a couple extra pieces of equipment now we're gonna take a temperature gauge remember I like to drop my yeast in a temperature between 68 and 78 degrees usually about 73 degrees is about my average temperature for climate altitude and whatever we're doing so I like to get a good temperature reading uh, it went from being clear and over this last I don't know couple minute or minute as we were doing this look it already changed color the sugar and the hot water is already dissolving the fruit and it's already starting to turn to a color Man, pretty happy about that. Uh, it was looking white with the fruit just floating on it just seconds ago. Now look at it. It's doing good. Uh, this is going to turn into something, I don't know, never tried a Cape Blue uh, Gooseberry before. So I really appreciate the farm of Epinoza uh, sending it to us. And we're sitting at 72. Can't complain. I usually add my yeast now. I already cut the top off because I got anxious because, man, the, the gooseberry splatting everywhere kind of put me off a little bit today, just to let you know. I, I tried to do really good, a live thing, and it kind of put me off there. So let's go ahead and I'm glad I pre-run some stuff sometimes because I try to do everything in one shot live. I don't like people editing stuff because then you don't know what they're doing. All right, so I got this on. Remember, take your drink now. Because we're going to do the jostle. That just mix the yeast up all in there really good before we top her back off to the top. One little goose. There's a gooseberry. There's the gooseberries. Yeah, there we go, right? All right, I'm going to wash this out real quick. Keep it from getting sticky. It's the one thing, man. I don't ever have a really sticky mess because I go right through all this stuff, take care of it. This will go into the washing machine. This goes into the recycle plastic. There we go. All right, so I have everything taken care of, our hydrometer meeting and everything. So we're going to put the lid on and our recipe, and we're going to put our airlock on. We use the airlock method of a balloon because of the fruit or because of anything else we use, man. If it ever just ferments and blows up, it hangs in the balloon, and the balloon hangs on the side of the jug, and you don't have a mess. Like I said, I was a little kind of uh, squeezing gooseberries and it shot up, man, hit me right in the face. And I was like, I'm so glad I'm doing this before I do it on the show because I was pissed. <laughs> but other than that, right, put this on and you won't be cleaning your ceiling and everything around you of, of, of a spill and splatter. But today you've made a cake gooseberry and uh, we drank some of the uh, cherry beer braggot that we made. I'm going to let you know that is a superior drink by all means and methods but i'm michael jordan here at the underground meadery like subscribe share check some of our other videos out 
there's a lot in them from equipment to racking devices and all kinds of stuff get this out to other people have them make a great need some of them are spectacular man award-winning by the way and some of them seem pretty dry and you have to back from sweet or you know like wow this is alcohol you know you might have to make a spritzer with it i'm just saying we make booze here michael jordan ab friendly company cheyenne wyoming underground meter like subscribe share we want you to be here enjoy your day and make a great mead man I make meads all day. Oh yeah, we're almost done with this. Huh?